Right then, I've just got my hands on one of the very first fully hydraulic road bike group sets to come from a Chinese manufacturer, and they're called L2. Hopefully you can uh, read that there. Yeah, this is their RX 12 speed hydraulic group set, and I am desperate to see if it lives up to the hype. So let's find out. Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another Fully Hydraulic uh, Trace Fellow production. My name, as always, is, uh, yeah, it is Luke. Right then, a little bit of a rush job on today's episode, so ap apologies in advance. But I literally got this in the post uh, a couple of hours ago, and if you're anything like me, you've been desperate for a bit more information on this L2 hydraulic group set here. So today, gonna be taking this out of the box, doing a kind of initial impressions video, seeing what it's like, because I'm desperate to see if it's good, basically, see if it lives up to the hype. Now, first things first, I pay for this with my own money. So this is the top tier 2x12 carbon version of this group set. And from watching the original video on this topic by Joe from, uh, from China Cycling, the recommended retail price for this thing from L2 should have been 2,280 RMB, which currently equates to about 270 quid. I paid way over that for this thing. So I paid 358 quid, so way over retail, but it's worth uh, bearing in mind that I didn't actually buy it from the official L2 store. They don't stock these yet on AliExpress. I had to buy it from a reseller. So the cost is gonna be higher for that reason. Um, so hopefully the price will drop, but uh, yeah, I'm a little bit out of pocket. For today's episode so if you want to you know drop a like maybe throw some baguettes in the chat <laughs> that, that would help um anyway enough of that and let's have a look at this thing okay so here it is in the retail box and i realize it won't actually fit uh, on camera so let me pull the camera out of the tripod um so yeah here it is in the box really nicely presented um and let's open it up so yeah there we go looks really really lovely so presentation is great and also the the foam i know it sounds silly but the, the foam they've used to pack it is a really good quality closed cell foam for the group set so it should keep everything nicely protected during shipping now the keen eyed among you might notice something is missing actually so there should be a little bottle of mineral oil up here but for whatever reason the seller couldn't actually ship this with the oil, I assume there's a problem kind of shipping flammable liquids in, in the post with stuff like this. So they actually uh, gave me a set of 160 millimeter disc brake rotors uh, in exchange there. So that's quite, quite nice. Um, but anyway, let's quickly go over what we've got here. So we've got both shifters there, left and right. Uh, we've also got both uh, brake calipers, one there and one there. Front derailleur and rear derailleur. Plus at the top here, we've got all the mounting hardware and it looks really comprehensive actually. I had a quick look at it. So that's, that is great to see. Anyway, let's get all this stuff out and look at it in some detail. Right, first off, here are the shifters. So they've got this kind of protective plastic wrapping on to protect the carbon from scratches during shipping, but I've taken it off on this one here. Now, one of the first questions I had actually was whether both the brake lever and the shifting paddle here, the shift lever at the back, whether they were both made of carbon and I can confirm they both are. So on the previous mechanical version of this L2 RX group set that I'm currently running on my other bike actually, the brake lever is made of the same kind of uh, unidirectional carbon, but the, the shift lever at the back is made of plastic. Whereas on this one here, both are made of carbon, which is really nice to see. And they both seem really good quality. I hope that's coming across on camera, but the, the, the quality of the carbon seems really high actually. So that is really good to see. Um, now another, another massive change with this shifter here is this thumb trigger. It's a pretty massive departure to the other thumb triggers that I've seen on previous L2 group sets. Okay, so as I just mentioned, this is the build that I put together relatively recently, a couple of weeks ago, and I am using the L2 RX 12 speed mechanical variety of this group set with a, it's a slightly older design from L2. And this is what the thumb trigger looks like. So it's right up the front here and it's absolutely fine when you're on the tops of the hoods, you can reach that lever paddle at the back there and easily hit that thumb trigger. The, the problem is in the drops, you can reach that paddle at the front, but there's no way that you can reach that thumb trigger with your thumb. I mean, I have quite long fingers as well and it's just not doable. I mean, it's a bit of a shame really because overall the shifting with this group set on the back and the front is absolutely fantastic. It's just that, yeah, shifting 
shifting in the drops it, it's not not really possible i mean you do get used to it and like i said the shifting is really nice overall but it is a definite shortcoming with this version of the group set now on the new hydraulic group set here l2 have adopted this kind of campagnolo or is it Campagnolo? Um, anyway, I've got this Campag style of thumb trigger here that kind of extends outwards. And although I've obviously not tested it, it's presumably designed to overcome those shortcomings and enable you to access all of the gears while you're in the drops. So really good to see a definite improvement over the previous generation design. Um, now the bleed port for these shifters is located in the top here underneath. Hopefully you can see that there. That's where the bleed port is. And the uh, hydraulic line, fires straight out the back of the shifter and you can also route the gear cable this side or this side depending on bar fitment so basically fitting these to a set of bars should be pretty straightforward as well these shifters also have free stroke adjustment via that little grub screw in that hole so you can kind of set the brake lever reach which is cool and although it's difficult to show on camera the quality of the rubber on the hoods is very high now this is often an area where i see cheaper group sets will fall down they'll choose a kind of a lower quality presumably cheaper rubber but in this case the rubber is nice and stiff holds its shape well should be nice and durable so that's great and also although it might seem a bit inconsequential this rubber bumper is really good to see on these uh, on these shifters actually so on the previous versions of l2 group sets you had a shifter much like this same as the rx group set i've got on my other bike and the the, the shifting paddle at the back here had a tendency to rattle against the back of the brake lever so you can imagine as you're riding along this is going to rattle around and in fact you can see it's worn away the paint on the back of the brake lever there from, from rattling around. Whereas on this updated hydraulic group set here, they've put that little rubber bumper in there. So now, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't make, it, make, it, make a sound at all really. So it's just a, a nice little high quality addition. And that's kind of a theme for these shifters in general. They just feel really high quality in hand, easily on par uh, with anything from like the likes of Shimano or SRAM, in my opinion. Okay, then here are the brake calipers here, and you can see they maybe wound up the brake line a little bit tightly. This is just how it came out of the box. And this is the one for the uh, front brake, um, because as you can see, the brake line is a, is a lot shorter. But unfortunately, they've put a little bit of a kink in the brake line. It might have happened during packing or potentially during shipping, but not a massive deal. I can just replace this when I come to fit them. And um, these calipers, they look really good quality, actually. But the one thing you might notice is, well, this group set is designed for road bikes, i.e. for a flat mount standard of, of brake caliper. So you would normally expect brake calipers on road bikes to look like this, um, but these ones here for this group set, these are clearly post mount calipers, which is generally accepted to be a mounted bike standard for uh, disc brakes. Now in the box with these calipers, you obviously get a series of adapter plates. So I'm assuming they will fit onto a standard flat mount road bike frame. Absolutely fine. But yeah, I thought it was kind of an interesting approach. I assume only having to develop a post mount uh, caliper as opposed to both a flat mount and a post mount caliper. I assume that will save L2 a lot of money in, in research and development and, and production costs as well. So presumably L2 can now use exactly the same caliper on both their road bike and their mountain bike group set. So it makes good financial sense. I guess for a smaller company like this to do that. Um, but other than that, there's not too much to say about these calipers. They use finned pads here for good heat dissipation. I believe the pistons in there are made of ceramic as well, which is something you'll see on a lot of Shimano group sets. And the pads themselves appear to be resin, which is great because I'm, I'm not a massive fan of fully metallic um, pads. But there we go. Seems like a pretty decent caliper. Now the hydraulic lines that are used along with the uh, olives, the barbs and even this compression bolt here uh, that you get in the group set they seem to follow the shimano standard which is great so no massive surprises there and like i mentioned earlier the mounting hardware that you get in the box is really comprehensive which is great to see loads of different length bolts for different frames and stuff plus if you look here these are the adapter plates for the brakes and apparently according to these you should be able to fit anything from a 140 millimeter rotor up to a 180 millimeter rotor on both the front and the back, which if true is really cool. And finally, the brake fluid. As mentioned, the bottle of it was omitted from my set for shipping purposes, but it's the same as the regular Shimano brake oil. And I have a couple of bottles of this hanging around. So that's exactly what I'll be using. Um, anyway, enough of that. Let's check out the derailleurs. Right then, front and rear derailleur here. Now the rear derailleur is exactly the same as the one that I'm currently running 
on my other bike, apart from the fact that this <laughs> has some uh, gold decals, whereas the other one is, is completely silver. But other than that, they're identical, and the one on map bike shifts really well. So high hopes for this derailleur here. Now, the quality and construction seems really, really good, and this part of the derailleur cage here is made of carbon. The back here is just re regular stamped steel, but having a nice little carbon piece is a, is a, is a nice, little, nice little feature. And I noticed this the other day. So can you see that little grub screw there? Normally on lower end group sets, the rear derailleur cage is pinned in place and you can't remove it. So you need to replace the whole thing if it breaks. Whereas on this one, you could just replace the cage and you could potentially swap this out for one with like oversized pulley wheels, something like that. So that's definitely something I'm going to explore in the future with this derailleur. Now the front derailleur here has actually had a small design update, which is pretty cool. So all the L2 group sets that I've used in the past have used a front derailleur exactly like this one, which is a very basic your style front derailleur. They work absolutely fine in my experience, but essentially when you install it, there's no cable adjustment on the front derailleur itself. So you actually need to install an inline barrel adjuster like this one here on my current bike. With this new RX 12 speed hydraulic group set, the front derailleur has this little kind of adjuster arm on the front here. And it essentially means that when you've got it installed and cabled up, you can use this screw here to fine tune the cable pull for the front derailleur. And potentially you don't actually need to install a barrel adjuster, which is, which is pretty cool. So yeah, again, good to see L2 are making these little design changes to their, to their group sets. And yeah, it just tells me they're focused on putting out a really quality product. Um, so yeah, there we are. I mean, obviously this unboxing here doesn't really mean much. I need to get this group set slapped on a bike and test it all out. Um, and on that front, I've got a build uh, plan for this group set, hopefully coming in January. So yeah, get subscribed for that one because it's going to be a really cool build. But yeah, overall, color me very impressed with this thing. I mean, even with the inflated price I paid, this is still a, re a really interesting kind of proposition. I mean, the choice of materials seem really good quality. The manufacturing tolerances seem really high. And just it's, it's apparent, at least to me, that they've really thought about the design of this thing and they've put some proper improvements in over previous generations, like that thumb trigger, the little rubber bumper on the back of the uh, brake lever, and even the little screw on the, on the front derailleur to aid in adjustment. I mean, it's clear to me that they've put a lot of thought into this and it hasn't been kind of rushed to market at least that's what <laughs> that's what i think but yeah i mean it's it's all for nothing until, until i get this thing tested maybe it's garbage you never know um so yeah got to get this on the bike really excited for that especially with 105 going di2 this year i mean it's that's so ridiculous maybe this is the new group set of the people we, yeah, we will see. So yeah, um, thanks for sticking with me. A bit of an odd episode today, but let me know in the comments what you think of this group set. It has certainly exceeded my expectations. So yeah, get subscribed so you don't miss the upcoming build with this thing. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode and I will see you next time. Ciao. Pow. Those are my knees popping. Okay, quick bonus clip at the end here. Let's do the let's do the weigh-in. So um, for comparison, I'm going to be comparing it to 105 disc, so Shimano R7020, because I think it's it's a good comparison. They're kind of in the same price range. So the 105 disc shifters weigh 610 grams for the pair. These are 556, so a little bit lighter there. The uh, 105 disc rear derailleur weighs 225 grams. This is 220, so yeah, five, five gram saving. And the front derailleur on Shimano 105 is 95 grams. This is 100, so a tiny bit heavier. So yeah, the total for all this gear on 105 disc is 930 grams. And this comes to 876. So what's that, 54 grams lighter. So yeah, could be worse. But um, there you go, hope that helps, and I will see you later. Okay, right, so a uh, bonus bonus clip <laughs> at the end here. So I've kind of finished up with the edit and I've been playing around with the, the shifters kind of uh, in the garage here, just seeing what they'll feel like. And the shifter, the, the right hand shifter, the one for the rear derailleur, yeah, got no issues with this. The thumb trigger seems to work absolutely fine. And when you put a bit of tension on the cable, works great. So this seems fine. It's this left hand shifter here that I've got concerns with. So it's just really, really stiff. So to push, well, this is to, for the front derailleur basically. It just, 
something about it is not particularly smooth. And then pressing this thumb trigger, you almost need to use kind of two thumbs here. It's just really, really stiff. I don't know. I find it sli <laughs> slightly concerning. It's not smooth at all. Maybe when there's a little bit of cable, a bit of cable tension on it, and I've got it installed on the bike, things will kind of be a little bit smoother. But right now, just kind of holding it in my hand, something about it is, yeah, just pressing that thumb trigger in. Oh, it requires the, a level of force that I'm, I'm almost uncomfortable putting through this thumb trigger here. But like I said, maybe it'll get better on the bike, but I've got some slight concerns about the shifter. But yeah, time will tell. I have to get it on the bike and try it out. Um, anyway, that, that's literally it. I'll see you next time. Ciao.